Okay, okay. we're going to go ahead with the Lord. Uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy of the praise this morning. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Glory Jesus. God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy this morning, Lord God. We call on your name this morning, Lord God, because of who you are, Lord, and who you are in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for each and every day that you bless us, Lord, and keep us, Lord. Help us, Lord, in our daily work, walk, Lord God. We just thank you and praise you, Lord. We ask you now for understanding, Lord God, understanding Hallelujah. of your word, Lord God. Amen. Make it clear, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord, for all you're doing, Lord. You blessed us while we was all on the highways all this week, Lord. You blessed us, Lord God. You blessed our pastor while they're coming down the road. We just thank you, Lord God, for blessing each and every one that's out there on the highways, traveling back and forth right now, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, for, for everything you do, Lord. And we just thank you for your word today, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. We give your name to praise. We give your name to praise. Hallelujah. We give your name to praise. Ah, glory. Hallelujah. We give your name to praise, yes, Lord God. worthy God. Because you're worthy to be praised, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for all you do right now. In yes. Jesus' name, yes. amen. 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 Good morning. Amen. Good morning. Praises be to our God. Amen. So we, we're continuing on, and, and we probably, you know, um, um, we probably will not finish on today, but, um, you know, the next time that we're offered the, uh, that we're given the opportunity to come back before you, we promise to just continue because this is where just the Lord is keeping us. Amen. So you guys just continue to pray for us, but just, um, uh, just a brief note as we go back and from what we were studying on last week. Um, and of course, you know, that the, I, I said that the title, if we had to title this, um, this teaching, if we had to title it, then it is called Entering God's Rest. And if I had to give it a subtitle, and, and I said the subtitle would be Stop Working, because I think we do so much of that, that we forget um, who it is that we're resting in. Okay, and um, so we are in the book of Hebrews. We continue on with the fourth chapter. Um, we'll begin with the sixth verse, but last week we talked about, we, uh, we saw in the first chapter where it was a warning that was given to us about, you know, that we should be very um, alarmed or anxious if we come short of entering into God's rest, just as the previous um, generation, the very first generation of Hebrews never entered into the promised land. They wandered for 40 years and we all know that. And then after that, the children who followed Joshua ended up going into the promised land. And we talked about rest and we said that rest, um, they were, there were several forms of rest. And, and when we were talking about the promised land, we was basically talking about a Canaan rest. And that was resting from their enemies, you know, resting from, you know, works and, you know, and, and wars and God was making provision. And I think James even showed you guys how they, what they entered into, it was nothing that they worked for, <laughs> amen? Because they entered into a land that was already flowing with milk and honey, whom they did not have to fight a battle for because God had already made provision for them. They came into a land that was already, you know, full of everything that they needed. And so in Joshua 24, the Lord reminded us and reminded Israel, hey, listen, you coming into this, you didn't do anything to deserve it. I'm just giving it to you as a gift. Amen. And, and that's what he gives us today. The rest that he gives us today, it is a gift. Um, and we know that the only thing that can allow us to come short of entering that is unbelief or what we call disobedience. Um, and basically what it is, is disbelief. You know, when we talk about unbelief, we talk and disobedience, we're talking about not trusting in God, because if we don't, then we're trusting on our own, amen, on our own will that we could do this thing on our own and we're in no need of anyone else. But if we trust in him and if we believe in him and if we rely on him, then what it is, is that we rest in him and he does the work for us, amen. 
And that's what we was talking about on last week. Now I ended and, and, and we talked about this Canaan rest. And, and I think I ended with you guys, we ended on last week and I was, I was showing you the example of Moses in Exodus 33, <clears throat> after the children of Israel had gotten God to a certain point where he was just, you know, uh, upset with them, <laughs> you know, for the things that, for just being disobedient and not following his will and the things that he was guiding them. And he told Moses, he says, hey, you know, you go ahead and you lead them. He says, but I'm not going, I'm gonna send, send an angel. You know, and 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 Moses was he he just wasn't going, he wasn't satisfied with the angel thing, you know. And he um so he went to God in prayer. And and I read you guys Exodus 33, 12 to 14. And I think Moses in there, and I'm not gonna read it again. I, I just wanted to, you know, elaborate just a little bit on it. And and Moses says to the Lord in this prayer, he says, you know, he says, Lord, you know, you you're before me and you say that you 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 trust me and that you know you you honor me he says but i want to know more of you and i need to know more of your ways because moses was not going to allow the lord to not lead his life and lead these children and that is that you know what that's where we have to be and that's why i said to you guys that basically when you look at moses's prayer and then god answering him and says I will be with you. And basically he says, my presence is going to be with you and I will give you rest. And that word presence that he says is basically saying that my face, you remember God and Moses had this relationship face to face, amen. And he, and he says my face, because if you continue on to that 33rd chapter, that's when Moses asked God so that he can see his glory and he had to turn his back on him, if you continue. But I did not go that far because I just wanted you to see how important it was for Moses and how important it needs to be for us to have this relationship with God and not to just allow it to just, you know, oh, you know, just, oh, it's all right. He gonna take care of me. He gonna do for me. No, we need to be diligent about this thing. We need to stand firm about this thing that we need to have a relationship with God. Because if we do not, I promise you, you will not enter into his rest. Because that's what his words say. I didn't say it, amen? Because if you read it, he says that because the only way that you can enter into his rest is to acknowledge who he is and to know who he is, amen? Okay, so then um, that's why I, so basically what Moses did in saying this to God and what we're doing today is basically he set up a, a, for us. It, it was just a foreshadow of what was to come. Amen, um, and, and what is to come now. And now we know that Christ is here. So um, basically if Moses says what he says, Christ is saying to us, Moses is telling the Lord, you know, walk before me. And Christ is saying to us, abide in me. <laughs> Amen. He says, if you abide in me and I abide in you. And, and as I was looking at it, he says, because if you don't in, in John 4, um, 15, 15, 4 and 5, he says, and I'm just going to read it for you real quick. He says, um, <clears throat> 15, 4 and 5, he says, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for apart from me, you can do nothing. And that is the attitude that we need to have. And that if you look at it, it seemed like it was the same attitude that Moses had. He realized that apart from God, he could do nothing. Israel couldn't enter nowhere. They couldn't get anywhere. They wasn't going to get anywhere. And that is the attitude that in order for us, so if we're given this warning, in order for us to enter into this rest, we need to abide in him. Amen? Amen. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue with verse 6. Um, we're going to you know, six through nine, how, however, um, and I'm gonna read it for you guys, okay? Verse six. Mm -hmm. Chapter four, verse six. Chapter four. And I Hebrews, am. <clears throat> verse six. 
Hebrews and I am there. Okay, so we're continuing on. And uh, he says in verse six, since therefore, so remember we was talking about a rest, right? Um, so he says, since therefore it remains that some must enter it. And they're talking about the rest. And those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Mm -hmm. And we right. talked about that. And that was the first generation of Israelites. Again, do you hear that? So number seven says, again. So then this rest is not complete, right? So again, it says he designated a certain day saying in David today after such a long time as it has been said today if you would if you will hear his voice do not harden your heart so as you can see it didn't end after the children of Israel entered into, um, that wasn't the complete, and I said to you guys, there was just a Canaan rest, remember? They entered into the promised land, the, the land was flown with milk and honey, they lived, but there was still a rest that God has because he says again, and then he explains to us that he designated a certain day when David says. So if you go to Psalms 95, and, and you uh, begin at the seventh verse in <clears throat> Psalms 95, that is where David mentions this, uh, uh, you know, this scripture is, is mentioned, um, where David actually mentioned about this rest. And if you would just be obedient to him. And I'm just going to read it for you guys. Okay, uh, verse seven, he says, and I, I started with seven because we needed to know who he is to us and who we are to him. And he says, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me and tried me Though they saw my work for 40 years, I have grieved with that generation and said, it is a people who go astray in their heart and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. So you see right there, David quotes what was done previously as to them not being able to enter into God rest. And they was talking about the rebellion and the rebellion, you guys know, cause we went over that. And that was when, you know, they made a big to, uh, to do, not trusting that the Lord had already laid out the land for them. And they were like, nope, you, you got these giants over there. Uh-uh, they're too much for us. We're not going in, we, uh-uh, nope, we're not trusting. And that was when, when, when the scripture says, as in the rebellion, and that's what they're talking about. But that is um, where you have to realize that, you know, he talks about unbelief, 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 I promise you, it will rob us of our rest. And we already know that. Not only that, but it even robs us of um, the satisfaction of receiving God's blessing. Not only are you not going to rest, but you're not even going to be blessed because if, you know, it's, it's a gift. Remember, the rest is a gift. Amen. And in this gift, you receive his blessing the same way today. When we receive Christ, we receive his blessings. Amen. Um, everything that comes with him is, is ours as long as we accept him. So, um, that, you know, that's, this is what rebellion or disobedience or unbelief will do to us. That's why the heart, the heart is a, the, the thing that's, that's, that controls everything, the heart. So therefore in Psalms 37, it says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. But this word, it says delight. Delight yourself also in the Lord. Be happy that you're in the Lord. 
it's a great happiness to know that you're in the Lord. And he said, and he will give you the desires of your heart. God can only give you good gifts. You, you got to look at the source. Where is what you want coming from? It's coming from the Lord, thy God. And if you believe in him, if you trust in him, if you obey him, if you do what he wants you to do, if you do his will, if you love him, it's, it's got to be a commitment that you have made towards him in order, in order for him to satisfy you. You must believe and trust in him. Not only that, you must trust that it was his son that he sent. Glory to God. Therefore, he said delight. And I like that word, delight in the Lord yourself. Delight yourself also in the Lord. It says commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness. What shall he bring forth? The righteousness of you in Jesus Christ. This is what the desires of your heart should be. We're working, you cannot work your way into salvation, but salvation can produce the good works in you. Isn't that right? The good works in you are produced because of the salvation, because God is working in your life. And we can't work our way into heaven. We can't work ourselves with no favors with God. We can't do anything because the word just said, without God or without Christ in our lives, we can do what? Nothing, absolutely nothing. John 15 and five said, without Christ, we can do nothing. So therefore in verse seven, it says rest. In Psalms 37 and seven, it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of who he hit of um, do not fret because of him who prospers in his ways because of the man who brings wicked shame to pass. So we're supposed to rest in the Lord. This is the only way that we can receive our rest is we got to be totally committed to God. We got to be satisfied that God is in control of our life, Amen. that he's guiding our life, that he's ordering our steps that he's doing everything he can to get us to where we need to be. And that's resting in him. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. So therefore we must rest in the Lord. We must live for the Lord. Hallelujah. And I said, we can't do anything unless he is in us. Amen. You know, not just in our lives, but this is in the heart, in us within us if you want to get to salvation he must be within you isn't that right not just a, a part of our lives don't treat him like that let him guide you let him be your heart let him take control of your life glory to god 100 percent that's how we need to be. We need to be committed because if don't, we will what? It says what? When we uh, will not enter the what? We're not enter his rest. We will not enter his rest. Amen. Amen. We will fall by the wayside. Jesus. And we don't want to do that. We would like to enter God's rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, Going back that you do not come up short. You know, I was just thinking when you he don't was, come up short. That's when he um when he yes. when when he said that I remembered about the do you guys remember the the scripture that talks about the the brides the ten brides and there were those who had their lamps ready and those who didn't and it's kind of like kind of reminds you of them you know that you you know your lamps will be if you, you're either going to have your lamps ready and trusting in the Lord and be ready so that when he comes, you, you know, so that when he came, so that they were prepared. Where the other ones, it was like, hey, help us, you know, give us some of your, you know, your oil. And they was like, nope, you need to go get your own. Amen, because you're working out this 
own soul, soul salvation, right? You, Where's the source? It's got to be your relationship between you and mm -hmm. God. So if you're not prepared, you know, and if you come up short because of the fact that you're trusting in your own self, that's that. That's what this whole thing is about. It's not trusting in in you and trusting in Him. And I think I said that on last week that there is so much going on around us to make us lose focus in who we need to be trusting in. That we are so much trying to trust, not only in us, but trusting in the world that they're making the right decisions for us and that we're not making the right decisions according you know, to our own selves. Listen, our job as believers is to trust in God. Let the world fight their own battle through this. You know, That's their stuff. Let them fight it. Trust in the Lord and allow the Lord to lead you. And however he is leading you, that's the way you go. Don't trust in man. I tell, and, and I tell anybody and everybody this, regardless to how it's going, in the end, it's between you and him. <clears throat> Amen. It's not you. It's not me and Brother Jones. He can't get me there. I promise you he can't get me there. He's just my husband. Amen. He can't get me there. It's got to be between me and God. I have to be able to trust what the Lord is telling me to do. I don't know everything that God tells each and every one of you, but I do know when he speaks to me and I have to trust. And as a believer, I have to be a witness of what it is that he is speaking in my life. That's why I, I minister whatever it is that he gives to me to give to you. That's what I give you. I don't give you any more. I don't take anything away from it or add anything to it. Amen. And so that's why I thought about those, 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 those 10 um, bridegrooms women and because the 10 virgins, because of the fact that, you know, some of us are coming up short because we're putting our faith, we're putting our hope, we're putting our trust and what is going on in the world today. Holidays. And we need to just stop and go back. Go back to your first love. Go back, trust him, amen? Because he's the one who has to lead and guide you. And if we continue on um, in verse eight, because I wanna go back to seven because of today, okay? Because David is talking about today and he's talking about in his time about arrest. But this today speaks to us, amen? It, it, it's not just a today, yesterday. It's today, today. So made. I'm going to stand on behalf mm -hmm. of God and say today, amen? Remains. Speaking to everyone who is, who is in this um, assembly right now with us and say today, if you will hear his voice, today, if he is speaking to you, today, if you can see his face, amen? Harden out your heart and allow him to move you, to move through you and to move in you. He says, for if Joshua had given them rest, then he, and as some of your, your, your Bibles, who have, if, if this is the new King James version, but if you are in other versions, it was says, then God would not afterward have spoken of another day. Amen. So God is still, the door is still open. Hmm. So you can receive this. Amen. We don't have to live with these shortcomings. We don't have to live in fear. Listen, when it started out, it says that we should have. He says, therefore, since the promise remained, enter his rest. Let us fear. Yeah. unless any of you seem to have come short of it. And I can remember when I was looking up the word fear and it says to be fear. It says the beginning of knowledge. <laughs> the, the beginning of wisdom is fear. Mm -hmm. Amen. The beginning of knowledge. So we need to know about this rest. We need to pursue this rest. If you're not pressing, press. Amen. Yep. If there's anything in your way, ask the Lord to remove it in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit that rests and rule and abides within us. Move it, Lord, and help me to rest in Be you. Diligent. Amen. Amen. You have to be. So we have to be able to move it that way. I mean, to ask God to intervene in our lives so that we can, because he says, 
he would not afterward have spoken of another day. So there, and this is where he came, because remember I talked about this Canaan rest, right? Here in verse nine, he says, there remains therefore a rest. Not another rest. Not another, a rest, a Sabbath rest, some of your books will say, for the people of God. A Sabbath rest. Mm -hmm. Amen. A Sabbath rest for those, for he who has entered his rest Amen. has himself also ceased from, from his works as God did from his. Therefore, we, once we enter into Christ's life, we therefore cease from doing our own work. Amen. The work that we thought we was trying to do the works we thought that when we were seeking God, and remember, we was talking about in uh, uh, Psalms 37, it says, uh, uh, he will give you the desires delight of your yourself, heart, delight, delight yourself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know how many times I asked the Lord for a new car? <laughs> how many times I asked the Lord for some financial help? Hmm. Were these things really? The, the desires of your heart. This is a delight in the Lord. God will take care of you. He will provide for you yes. if you just give your life to Him. Stop fearing the things of the world. Start understanding what God wants you to do in His life. And he will give you those desires of your heart and you will come into complete rest. Oh no, complete rest because he is taking care of everything for you. You know, I don't think we understand how, how Jesus really wants us to work. He said that you'll stop your work and we'll start doing what? Good works. The ministry won't stop. The good works won't stop, but the work that you've been trying to do, the work you've been trying to get favor. Look, if I do this for the Lord, he's going to show me some favor. If I know he doesn't need a person to work and try to uh, please him because he wants to do all the work for you, just like he did for the Israelites when they walked into the place. And he said the buildings were already there. The fruits were already there. The land was already provided for you. The honey was already there. God wants you to be the same way. Glory to God. He wants everything for you that he has desired for you. Everything. All you got to do is delight in him. Be happy knowing that he's God and he's in control and he is leading you and guiding you mm -hmm. and protecting you. He says, fear not. He is protecting you. He is keeping you. Because why? Because he loves you. All we have to do is continue to listen to him. We will not harden our hearts because we'll continue to listen to him. Each and every day, I will go to God in prayer and listen to the Lord, knowing what he wants you to do in your life because he is in control of the heart. Hallelujah. It says in verse 8, it says, for Joshua had given you, that's the one we just read, right? In 10. So we are now at uh, 11. No, we're still in 10. Wait, wait. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, no, no. So, so I, we're still in 10. I was just um, going through and looking for something for you guys. Um, we're still in 10. Um, um, for he who has entered his rest. Right, for he who has entered his rest um, has himself also, also ceased, ceased from ceased, his stopped. work. Yes, and, and did, that's what we were And that's why is, I right? said if I had to do, put the subtitle, then I had to say stop working. He stop says, working. Because just as God, you know, if you remember the from the very, in Genesis 2 and 2, it tells you that once the work of God was completed, then he says, you know, then the, the, um, the Lord stopped. 
And then the, the Bible says that he rested from his work because his work was complete, you know? So um, the idea, so the idea of resting is not working right to stop so that's why we said stop the work it's not the but the promise is that we are going to be his workmanship right isn't that what the promise is ephesians that we are two. in ephesians 2 and 10 that we are his workmanship and that we were created in or i, I think one time i taught that lesson and i said that it, it is the workmanship is like a portrait you know because we are exactly what god wants us to be you know, we're this portrait that he places on display. You know, you know what a, a nice picture looked like, right? So we are his workmanship. We are his portrait. And we are created in him, amen, to do good works, amen? And, and, and so the idea is that every believer must possess. It's a must. There, there is, I may possess it or I will do my best to get it. No. Every believer must possess this rest because this rest that you possess is part of your, your salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's not just, you know, when he says today, he's not talking about just today. He's talking about every day, day after day after day you have to be able to remain and to enter into this. And in order to do this, Christ has to be the one that is working in your life. He says that no one comes to the Father but by me. So you have to allow Christ to work in your life so that you can rest in God. Can I do it? Unless you allow the Son, unless you receive the Son, amen? And when you receive the son, then you receive the spirit of the son and then you rest in him. Absolutely. Amen, amen. So then uh, uh, we talk about the workmanship and then James goes and, and we're talking about, so if we go to 11 and he says, so let us therefore mm -hmm. be diligent. Diligent. That means persistent, mm -hmm. okay? To enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. So here we go. In verse one, he warns you about not entering or coming up short. And in verse 11, he comes back and he warns you again and says that you need to be diligent. Basically, you need to be pressing your way you know, um, um, so that you can enter this rest. And I said to you that every believer needs to because of the fact that we're his workmanship. And, 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 and so when we say that, you know, that, uh, you know, we created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And, and, and so that we know that the work that he's doing in us and through us is, 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 is us being a witness of who he is, amen? And, and giving him glory and, and truly, you know, walking in this newness of life so that others may see, he says, because every time, remember when I read that, that 17th verse for you guys, as he was praying unto the Lord in John, he kept saying that if they do these things, Lord, I, I have shown them who you was by, I know they know your name through me, Lord God. He says, and, and they know you through me, Lord God. He says, but everything that they do, when they do it, they will know that you have sent me. So there's good works that we're doing so that when the world sees us, they know that Christ is real because he's real in us and that God truly did send him. You know, because obviously there must be a question out here, you know, or, or whether or not, you know, at during that time, whether or not he's real. And who knows? I'm sure during this time, this, that question probably still arises. You know, is he real? And then if we're not resting in him and allowing other people to see him through us, then we're not really showing who he is. Amen. So we no longer work on the basis of our own righteousness because, and, and I think James says that because we are, I think it's one of our, um, when we do our, uh, 
what do we call it, Sister Eva? I know you don't have to tell me. Um, our proclamation, when we do our proclamation, right? We say we are the righteousness mm -hmm. of God in Jesus' name, amen? We we not our own righteousness. Our righteousness is like filthy rags. Amen. That? But we mm -hmm. are the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. So for us to be the righteousness of God, then we are doing the good works of God. Amen. And that the world is seeing God through us. Amen. And in that, that's how we rest. Resting does not mean that I can't go back to my job from nine to five. Lord knows I got to go for a few. You got to go, Joe. See, he's saying that only because he retired. You know that's not right, right? But don't y'all worry about that because I'm right behind him, okay? Now, I know there's a few more out there that still got to work. Please work so you can pay your bills. Amen. But that's not Amen. Right. But that's not the work we're talking about. And we're not and then we're not talking about being, you know, an encourager to one another, you know, building up one another because this is what we're called to do as believers. Encourage one another. Amen. So when we're talking yeah. about this rest and we're saying, "Hey, listen, stop the work." That means stop the work trying to do the work for God. Stop trying to make it in. You either going to get in, you know, because he called you in. Amen. Or are you not coming in? <laughs> Bottom line, don't worry about it. Stop the work because he doesn't even see the work. That's the thing. You know, we doing all this work. He doesn't even see it. You know, people work nine to five trying to get God to, to please God. He doesn't see it. He doesn't. The only thing that he sees is himself in you. That's it. He doesn't see you. Glory, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He sees Every himself. time he looks at me, he sees himself. He sees himself. Jesus Christ. That's all he looks in for. You. Is me in it. He looks for himself in me. In you. If he sees me, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> Praise be to our God. Mm -hmm. No, really, think about that. Because if he's seeing me, then he's looking at my flesh. But he's a God of spirit. And he says, they that worship, worship what? In spirit, am I correct? So he's not looking at the flesh, he's Come looking on. for the spirit. He's looking for the spirit. Have and there know. is a spirit that dwells Come in on, me. Bro. There is a spirit that dwells in you. And it is the spirit of Jesus Christ. God himself in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. In so the, yes, so we no longer have to so cease from the work and mm -hmm. stop working. Mm -hmm. And we know that. You know, and then some people say, Well, I already know that. Okay, I'm glad you did, but you know what? Obviously, the Lord is speaking to someone. So I'm only being, I'm only being um um obedient as to what the word is saying. Amen. So the, obviously there must be some of us. So um, that is still. So let us therefore be diligent, diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. That's um, go ahead. That's not um, you don't you we we don't want to we don't we don't want a whole generation. It, it you seems like think there's that. a possibility then that we could fall. Amen. That Amen. we can fall on that ground. Amen. Yes. Because we were never what? Seated. We were never rock solid in Christ Jesus. <laughs> and I said seated. But we need to be rooted. Anchored. You, you know those words that we use in church? <laughs> My soul is anchored in the Lord. No. Make sure. It says make your what? No. Salvation. Make sure that you are rooted, that you are anchored, that you are seated, that you are grounded Amen. in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Make sure that he is the head of your life mm -hmm. and that you are part of the body of Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Make sure that the word you hear is that Christ Jesus is. The one who raised from the dead, Amen. the one who walked on the earth, the one who died for your sins, the one who covered all your sins with his blood. 
make sure this is the one that you're talking about yeah. and that you're seeking him yeah. in spirit and in truth, that you're seeking him, glory to God, that he is the ruler of your life. Make sure that you are and that he is within you, living within you each and every day. Because today, if you do not harden your heart, you can enter into his rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew. Amen. Matthew 6, 25. No, that's not, not that yet. one. Mm -mm, that's not that one. So if you continue on and... um. We're continuing, so let us therefore be diligent. And we saw that, and we, and so when it says after hearing this truth, so here you've heard it, okay? You've heard this truth. That's why he says, "Let us therefore." So you heard this truth. So be diligent in doing what is right, and let's just trust in God. We have to rely to, on Him. Let us cling to Him and the work that Christ has done for us, because the only thing that can separate us from Him as we know from the very beginning, in which is the same thing that kept a whole generation of people, you know, from entering into the promised land is disbelief. It's unbelief. That's just bottom line, nothing else. Even and this is what the world the told us. Mm -hmm. And we saw that. Even um, leaders. Even leaders. And, mm -hmm. and yes, and remember, I talked to you guys about that last week, that even leaders, because we saw that with Moses and Aaron, they could not even enter into the promised land because they did not believe in what God had told them to do. And they went on and did their own thing. Amen. So we have to be really be mindful of that. And if we continue, verse 12 says, for the word of God is living, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Let, let's just stop there. Hmm. So here, we just talked about being diligent and very persistent in entering into this rest. And then he goes right into telling you that the, this is the way that you can enter. Listen, when God told them about going into this land, this land of promise, or even when Christ comes to us, the only way that we can receive Christ is by accepting what? The word. That's the bottom line. By accepting the word. It tells us that the word is living. And if we look at John 1 and 1, what does it tell? If we look at, at, at John 1 and 1, it says in the beginning, right? <laughs> if you go the back word. to John 1 and 1, it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. I mean, the word was with God and the word was God. The word is God and the word is with God. And it says that the word of God is living so that we know that the word is with us. So then that God is with us. So when we accept his word, that means that he is with us. It's not just written words. It is himself that is with us. Amen. So that's why the word is living. It's not dead. Amen. Uh, I might have a book and I read a book. And as I read, you know, I'm reading the word. But this is the only word that you can read that will come alive. Come on. Amen. It can change. If it changes me and it changes you, then you know that the word is living. That is just not, you know, a written word because we know that the word is God because it says that the word is God. And then it says he was in the beginning with God. And then it goes on to say all things were made through him who the word and without the word, nothing was made that was made in him in the word. Listen, did y'all notice I took all of that out and I'm just keeping the word there? Because I need you to see that the word is living. Amen. And that the word is powerful. So 
it says, in the word was life, and the life was the light of men. So that is the word. The word is living. It is the life, and it is the light of men. The word gives us this. And then we know that the word is powerful. Amen. And we saw that in one and three, that it's powerful because whatever it goes out to do, it will do it. Oh. Not only accomplish it, but if you continue, it tells you that not only is it powerful, but it is sharper than any two edge. Now, if you have one edge, you might leave something behind. But two edges usually cut to where it usually picks up whatever the first edge has left behind, right? But it tells you that it is sharper. That means it goes deeper than a two edge would do. Amen. So then though, that tells you the power of the word, that it will go deeper. And it says to even the point of piercing to even the division of soul and spirit. So you that word, that word goes deep. You can't hide nothing from nothing. God. Nothing. He's, he's letting you know right now. Nothing. He said, I can nothing. go. The word, when I talk to you, it'll go where it will pierce you. And that's the heart, the thought. It yep. it will go. It'll go where medicine can't go. <laughs> is, is isn't that something? His word can his word can heal you. Amen. His word is that power. Amen. It makes you naked in front of him because he knows everything about you. When it pierce you and cut you, he's letting you know that he is there. He can tell everything about you. You can't hide nothing from him. Oh, glory, hallelujah. It goes through the joints and marrows. Amen. And it discerns. Once it's there, it discerns. Glory to God. Oh, it'll make you think. That's the word being alive in you, making you think, oh, there is. In fact, I know for a fact that there is a God. Hallelujah. He's talking to believers because that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to be 100% Christ Jesus. He wants you to enter into his rest. Amen. And the word of God will do that. Amen. Amen. It says that and we talked about the marrow is a discerner. Discerner. A and discerner thoughts. of thoughts and the intents Tent of the heart. Of the heart. God already knows it before you even do it. Come on. Before you even thought because of it. Because before you even think it, <laughs> he already knows it. I think was, I think one time we was talking and we was talking about, and I think, yeah, in our prayers, a lot of times we always say, Lord, we come to you. We stand before you naked. You don't even have to tell him that because if the word of God is in you, you are naked before him. And that's the thing we do sometimes we, and, and when I say we, you know, I always put myself in it because I, I, I do not exclude. Sometimes we think that, you know, some of the things that we do that God doesn't know it. And then we trying to fix it and correct it. Like I said, he already knows it before we even do it. You Just know, so it's like, like this. there's nothing that you can do that he is not aware of. I told her, Sister Jones, I said, your actions follow your thoughts. If you think about that, if your actions follow your thoughts, and if he was the desire of your heart, <laughs> That's a good one. isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Before you think it, you are already in Christ Jesus, so there shouldn't be any other thought, thought there, but of him. But if your actions, of following your thought and, and, and you're not thinking correctly, you, you, you're being disobedient. And now you're, you're 
uh, Dr. Dave, he talked about that quenching the spirit. Isn't that right? You, you're quenching the spirit then. Hallelujah. And you don't need to do that because Jesus said he will be there before you think it. He's already knowing exactly what you're going to do. He already knows exactly what you're going to do. So let him be the desire of your heart. And then when your thought process start thinking, your actions will follow. You know, when you talk about Quint, and, and yes, and I remember Pastor Dave, as well as Pastor Ed talked about quenching, I think, the spirit. And when you think about, you know, and when we were studying this, um, when you quench the spirit, you just denied God. Have you thought of that? When you quench, when you prevent the spirit of God from doing what it is that he is supposed to do in you, you just denied him. Disobedience. That's disobedience. Mm -hmm. But you know, we, 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 we just think, oh, I'm not ready to do it That's right now, saying. so I'll take care of it later. No, it doesn't work that way. Because look, if you look at 13, it says, and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of God or him, or all things are open to the word, to him we must give an account. We must. So how can you be open to him and yet you're quenching him? Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of like quenching is, is to stop. Um, the, the sort of question is asked, so what is quench? It's like doing totally opposite, preventing the spirit preventing from the, the good works that God has called you to do for you to do. To work in your life. Yeah, mm -hmm. that you decide you want to do something a little different, maybe at the time, you know, and I'll get back to it, Lord. But what we, we th there's no such thing as I'll get back to it because remember the Bible tells us and even Jesus tells us that we are no longer our own. We've been bought with a price. So we don't belong to ourselves. Who are we to say, wait up, Lord, I'll get back with you on this here. This ain't <laughs> yours. You know, this is no longer your Ooh. life. It is his life. Amen. And to, to receive this rest. I mean, listen, all everything that we're talking about is about this rest. It's not, and, and, and we're not saying, I'm, believe me, I'm not beating on no one. I'm not saying because I'm talking to me too. I'm talking to Joe Z. Jones. Amen. Don't quench the spirit because when I do that, I become disobedient to God and I cannot enter this rest. He will not let me in. We serve a holy God. We serve a righteous God. Amen. He says, I am holy. So that's why you have to be holy. So in order for me to enter this rest, I have to be there. But don't think you're doing the work. Let him Amen. do the work. Amen. In your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Ooh. To the most high. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yep. There is no creature. Amen. A Sabbath rest. So today, here we go back. Today, if you will hear the voice of the Lord speaking to you or through, through any one of us, then harden not your heart and receive him and he will give you rest, amen? And we know that. And so we should be a little bit more diligent. And that's what he says, that we need to be more diligent about entering. And he gives us the conditions so that we know the word of God. He says, because the word is what will allow us to enter. We just saw that. And the word we said in the beginning is God. And the word is with God. The word gives us life and light to men. Jesus Christ, we are the light of the world if we accept the word. 
Amen. And, I, and I'm going to quote Dr. Parker. God called us. He has given us this. Um, he says the work that we are to do is to accept and to believe in his son, Jesus Christ. That's it. He's not asking you. He's not asking you to turn 50 tables around in the church for him. He's not asking you to wash all the dishes. He's not asking you to open the door every time the church doors is open. He's not asking you for none of that. None of that. All he's asking you is to trust and believe in the word. That's it. Amen. That is it. And with that, you will receive rest. That's the bottom line. Amen. But we're going to stop here and then we'll pick it up the next time that we're with, um, that, um, you know, we are, uh, the Lord blesses us. And, um, amen. Glory to God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give your name to praise. Thank you, Lord God, for your word today, Lord God. Uh, continue, Lord, to be with us, Lord, yes. and bless us, Lord God. Keep us, Lord, in your word. Keep us, Lord, in your word. Keep us, Lord, in your word. Yes. Forever, Lord. For we one day would love to enter into your rest. Oh, we so we give your name to praise, honor, and glory for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Stop. Amen. Stop. Stop.